Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 4.3, multiplication with decimals and whole numbers. Please pause and write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to multiply a decimal and a whole number using drawings and place value. Please pause to write the lesson objective in your notebook. Let's begin by reading the Unlock the Problem. It says, In 2010, the United States Mint released a newly designed Lincoln Penny. A Lincoln Penny has a mass of 2.5 grams. If there are five Lincoln Pennies on a tray, what is the total mass of the pennies? Mass is another word for weight, so we want to know how much the tray of pennies weighs. So, let's answer the blue box questions to get us started. It says, how much mass does one penny have? What well, told us a Lincoln penny has a mass of 2.5 grams. So 2.5. How many pennies are on the tray? It said there are five pennies on the tray. And use grouping language to describe what we are asked to find. So we are asked to find five groups of 2.5. So we're going to be multiplying 5 times 2.5. So our first step is that we want to estimate. We know we're going to be multiplying 5, but it says we're going to round the decimal to the nearest whole number. 2.5, 5 makes us round up, so that's going to round to a 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. So we know that all five pennies together are going to be about 15 grams. Now let's go ahead and multiply this decimal by a whole number to solve our answer. When we multiply by a decimal, we follow the same procedures as when we multiply by a whole number. We line up our decimals farthest to the right, and then we multiply the farthest column to the right first. So we multiply 5 times 5. 5 times 5 gives us 25. So that's going to be 25. But notice that that's not 25. That decimal point needs to jump in the middle right there. It's 2.5. All right, next we need to multiply 2 times 5, right? Across like this. Now remember, this is a whole 5 times a whole 2, so that's going to be a 10. And I'm going to light it up as if I had a decimal here. So I'm going to line it up with the 0 underneath the 2, like it's 10.0. And now I'm going to add the two parts together. So 5 plus 0 is 5, 2 plus 0 is 2, and then bring down the 1. And then remember there's a decimal there, so there has to be a decimal here. So the Lincoln pennies have a mass of 12.5 grams. Now I also want to show you another method of doing this. When I do this, I write them all like this, 22.5 times 5, just like the book did. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that that decimal is not even there and I'm going to multiply. So 5 times 5 is 25. And 5 times 2 is 10 plus the 2 we had above gives me 12. But now my last step is if I have one decimal place here, then I'm going to count one decimal place in my answer. So I get the same answer of 12.5. I think this method is easier than trying to line up your decimals underneath, but both ways are great options. Let's look at another option in the another way on the next page. Another way to multiply a decimal is to use place value patterns. So let's read. Having a thickness of 1.35 millimeters, the dime is the thinnest coin produced by the U.S. Mint. If you stacked eight dimes, what would be the total thickness of the stack? So we are being asked to multiply 1.35 
times 8. So step 1 says write the decimal factor as a whole number. So it says instead of writing 1.35, I'm going to multiply that by 100, and I'm just going to get 135. And we're going to leave the 8 alone. So then we multiply 8 times 5 is 40, the zero is underneath. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 4 is 28, so the 2 goes on top and the 8 is underneath. And then 1 times 8 is 8, plus 2 is 10. So that's where we get this number of 1080. But now, since I multiplied by 10, and that 100 over here, and that's not what my actual number was, now I want to multiply by a descending power to put my decimal back in. So instead of being 135, it's really 1.35. So if I have 1080, and I have one, two place values, then I need to put my decimal back, one, two place values. So a stack of dimes is going to be 10.80 millimeters tall. Question number one. Explain how you knew that the product of 8 times 1.35 is greater than 8. Well, I know if I'm multiplying 8 times 1, it's going to equal 8. And it's not 1, it's 1.35. So 1.35 is greater than 1. So my answer of 1.35 times 8 had to be greater than 8. Question number 2 says, what if we multiplied 0 0.35 by 8? Would the product be less than or greater than 8? Okay, well, if I'm multiplying by less than 1, if I multiply by 1, my answer is going to be 8. But if I multiply by less than 1, well, then my answer has to be less than 8. So if, my, if I'm multiplying by 0 0.35 is less than 1, so 0 0.35 times 8 will be less than than 8. Because unless I'm multiplying by 1 or bigger, my number is going to get smaller. Alright, fifth graders, time for the lesson activity. The lesson activities need to be done in your math notebook. So write these two problems down in your math notebook and be ready to solve. So we are going to find the product. That means that we are going to multiply. I'm actually going to do one with you and then you can do number two on your own. So when we multiply, we're gonna multiply straight up just like we normally would if that decimal wasn't there. So nine times three is 27. Three times one is three plus two is five, and three times five is 15. Now we're gonna count the decimal places. So one, two decimal places, means that we need to match that in our answer. One, two decimal places. So my answer is going to be 15.57. Notice that in product two, you're still moving two decimal places, so your answer should have two numbers and then a decimal point and then two more numbers. Go ahead and try number two on your own. I look forward to seeing your answer in class tomorrow. Great job.